Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this episode, uh, we're going to be creating a sword, much like this one, uh, that will be ready for the Blender game engine. Uh, now this sword is only 127 vertices, which is considerably low. Uh, you can see it has a color map. It has a normal map. Sorry, yeah, there we go. It's a normal map. It has a reflection map and an actual reflection. Uh, now, this reflection is actually a fake reflection. It's not real time, but it does create a shiny looking uh, kind of look to it. Now, I messed up a little bit with the texturing here, but we will fix this in the, in the final product, uh, as well as make this look a bit better. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, this tutorial is going to include uh, modeling, texturing, um, Uh, creating low poly uh, model, high poly model, and normal maps. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new Blender scene here. Open up Blender. Uh, now, before I do anything, I'm just going to save this. I've made a file called Sword. Under YouTube test, I'm going to go Sword. Uh, now, I can grab everything, delete it, grab a lamp. Bring it up. I'm going to go into this area here and add a background image. The background Im image is under my test, and it's this reference image here. So I'm going to use this as my image for creating uh, my weapon, and I'm going to be using the top one. So uh, we're going to go ahead and add a circle to start off. We're going to start from the very bottom, and because this is going, the first one we're going to make is a high poly model. It doesn't quite matter. Uh, how high poly or low poly it is. So 32 is a good amount to start with. Uh, I'm going to scale that down to the appropriate size and roughly get it in the right area. Uh, now grab it on the Y axis, add a mirror modifier, and uh, put it on the Z axis. And now what we can do is uh, extrude it and scale it inwards. And you can see it uh, almost rotates a little bit uh, right here and it almost seems to go this way and that's actually a rotation that's happening uh, and we can extrude that on the y-axis turn on clipping and clip that to right there uh, we can bring that in just a little bit and uh, to get a nice even face here I'm going to extrude it scale it inward merge at center and just like that we have a nice looking face there uh, we can Rotate that just a little bit if you want to make that look a little cleaner. Now we can go cursor to select it. And before anything, do anything else, I'm going to add a subdivision surface uh, with two renders. And we can start to shape this out a little bit more. So we can add a crease right there and another one right there. Another one right there just to uh, I'm gonna edge slide this one in a little bit more. Uh, that's looking pretty good. We can add another circle, and this one's going to be rotated on the y-axis by 90. And if we look from the uh, side view here, we can first scale it down. And if we go into this view here, we want to scale it to roughly the size of that. And then go back into this view and scale it more ovalish. Uh, now we can grab it and grab it on the z-axis and scale it outwards and we're going to add a couple of loops in there and the reason for that is we're going to grab this guy here turn on proportional editing scale uh, make sure it's on connected scale Y and if there wasn't those loops there it wouldn't scale so smoothly and that's looking pretty good so now what we can do is make sure this is just a little bit past that so it fits in uh, fits in nicely you can turn off proportional editing uh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, now what we can do is add cursor to selected. And uh, first thing I'm going to do, because this is a mirror modifier, we don't actually need all these uh, loops on the other side, so we can delete those vertices there. Uh, 
and now add a cube, move it over on that side, and move it back over. I'm going to scale this cube down quite a bit, just to get the actual uh, uh, vertices down themselves. Uh, before I actually do anything, I messed up. I'm going to scale, grab Z, uh, grab Z negative 1, and make the median point uh, to the 3D cursor. Change that to the scale point. Uh, so that's going to scale downwards this way. Now I know that the actual crease is right here, uh, but I want to create it right evenly on the on the line. So I'm going to create it right here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a loop cut right in there. And a... Uh, we don't actually need a loop cut. Actually, we may as well add one. And we can add some loop cuts right in here to beef up those edges a little bit. And we do not need one on the bottom just yet. Uh, we're going to be extruding this and scaling, with, uh, scaling it. You can change that back to the median point. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, start messing around with this. You can turn this off if you want, just so it's uh, a little more clean while you're actually working. I always like turn that it off when I'm working because you can see what you're doing a little better and uh, it doesn't block up a lot of the view. But apparently, it just wants to turn back on. There we go. Uh, and feel free to go nuts on this uh, high poly model. It really doesn't matter uh, how high poly it is. And uh, now we can add uh, some more uh, an edge down there. Sorry. And uh, because there's that little crease there, we're going to go ahead and add that. So I'm going to grab it on the y-axis, come on, grab it on the y-axis to right about there, and now we can grab everything else and bring it much, much down on, much more down on the uh, y-axis, and uh, we can grab the center one here, the center little ridge, and turn on proportional editing again, make sure it's on connected, grab y, And scale that down a little bit, and now that it's a little bit more manageable. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll actually grab, uh, we want to grab these ones again because we want to change that. And maybe we'll grab this loop this time and grab Y, and that will. It's much smoother. And uh, we can grab this. And... No, adjust this a little bit. I just want to make sure that it looks relatively smooth. Once we got that, we can go ahead and grab this last one here and scale it outwards a little bit just to get a nice edge there and uh, you can go ahead and add a loop right down there again just to kind of make that crease a little tighter and we can go ahead and delete these inwards faces here uh, the ones on the top we'll see why before I do anything else though I'm going to go cursor to selected Delete those faces. Uh, maybe delete those ones too. Uh, oops. What is that? Uh, I don't know what that is. Must have done something with the uh, with the grease pencil, I guess, or something. I'm going to delete those faces there, and just up here I'm going to go cursor to selected, just so it's on the right y axis, or z axis, sorry, and make sure this is on uh, 3D cursor, 
Shift D, scale Z, negative one, and remove doubles, which will connect those. And now we're gonna add uh, some really sharp loop cuts right up there to create that really nice sharp uh, angle. Cool. So now that we've got that, we can continue onwards and uh, going to do so by first selecting everything in here. Cursor to selected, add a cube, and this cube is going to be uh, our, our blade. Uh, we can scale that downwards and inwards or whatever. But we just want to make sure it's uh, roughly the size. Let's turn off proportional editing. Roughly the size of what we think the blade would be. Uh, and I think that'd be about there. It'd be pretty thin. And it would get it would be thinner at the base, um, and then get thicker and thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a double or sorry a crease right there. Skill it on the Z axis. I'm kind of using this bottom line as more of a reference than the top line because uh, uh, just because the way it works. I'm gonna add a couple of loop cuts in loop cuts in here, and then a couple uh, like so. We're gonna try and get this point right here, uh, so we can bring these back. I forgot to grab those ones, thought it was on a mirror. It is the wrong axes. And that's gonna get you a nice round point. You can throw another one in there. Uh, skill Z. And actually, whoops. What I'm actually going to do is control edge slide. Now you can't with that. Never mind. So I guess I'm going to edge slide these individually, which I don't like to do because it you get uneven typology. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. And as you get closer here, uh, you can edge slide that a little bit. And grab it on the Y axis and just start to point it inwards. Uh, because as it gets uh, more and more to the tip of the sword, uh, it's going to get uh, bigger, or it's going to get thinner and thinner. Uh, and down here at the very, very end of the sword, it's going to be pretty thick. Not super, super thick, but thick enough to make a difference uh, from here to here. Uh, I'm going to actually edge slide that quite a bit more to really bring out the sharp edge in there. Uh, now I'm going to grab this face here and grab it uh, on a very small angle on the y-axis. And just grab it inwards like so. Uh, maybe grab it out just a little bit off clipping I guess I clipped it just like so just to create a crease in there and now that that's off uh, we can bring it closer in these directions and then you have a really nice sharp edge right there and that's how you're gonna get that edge in there uh, and it kind of naturally decreases right here but if you wanted to fix that uh, over here just you know bring it up a little bit and that should take care of your problem. Well, uh, that has pretty much been uh, this episode. I am going to scale this. Where's my proportional editing? I guess I don't have proportional editing anymore. So we can do this manually. We're just going to scale it ever so slightly as it gets smaller. Scale Z. Scale Z. Z. Just slightly and slightly and keep going a little bit uh, until you've got a good 
point, and that looks pretty good to me. So yeah, this has been the first episode. What is that? Where we are creating a yeah, I knew it was the grease grease pencil. Um, we've just created the high poly model here, which is uh, eleven. Uh, 811 tries, and uh, a lot more with the subdivision surface. Uh, you can see how many that is in there, quite a bit. Uh, so next episode, we will be creating a low poly model and baking a normal map for the low poly model, as well as uh, baking a ambient occlusion, and that also means UV unwrapping. Anyway, thank you for watching this uh, tutorial. If you found it useful, please feel free to give it a like and uh, share it with your friends. Anyway, thank you guys. Bye-bye.